Five things everyone should know about postpartum depression. Hello, I'm Dr. Sarah Allen, and I'm a therapist who specializes in working with pregnant and new parents in the Chicago area and throughout Illinois and Florida using virtual therapy sessions. I have over 25 years experience treating maternal mental health issues. I've also presented at conferences and published research on postpartum depression. In addition to my private practice, Dr. Sarah Allen Counseling, I'm the founding director of a statewide nonprofit organization called the Postpartum Depression Alliance of Illinois. I'm British, as you might be able to tell, and I completed my doctorate in the UK. My dissertation was on the connection between traumatic childbirth and postpartum depression. When I moved to the USA in the late 90s, I quickly realized that there was little awareness and support for postpartum depression. And so since 2003, I've worked on a statewide basis to get legislation and a wider awareness of what postpartum depression is and how it can negatively affect women, their children, and their families. I've been asked a question about what are the five things everyone should know about postpartum depression. Throughout this video, I will say both postpartum depression and its abbreviation, PPD. The first thing I want people to know is that there are many factors that put a woman at risk for postpartum depression. And it's important to find out if you have any of the risk factors when you're newly pregnant or newly postpartum. That way you can seek out early treatment if you do have factors that put you more at risk. These numerous factors contribute to the emergence of postpartum depression it can be either genetic or some are biological and some are environmental or situational. It's important to assess any risk. As I said, this makes it sure that your doctor can make appropriate professional help available to you. This can reduce the effects of postpartum depression it has on a woman, her baby, and the family. Here are some of the most prevalent triggers. Hormonal changes. Pregnancy triggers significant hormonal changes in the body, and these hormones drop drastically after having a baby, and that can cause mood swings and potentially lead to postpartum depression. Following childbirth, this, this sharp decline in hormone levels can actually intensify emotional instability and can increase the likelihood that a woman will become depressed. Women who are sensitive to hormonal fluctuation during their menstrual cycles or if they suffer from premenstrual dysphoric disorder, they are at an increased risk of PPD. Second risk factor is maternal mental health history. Women with a background of depression, anxiety, or any other mental health issues are more likely to develop postpartum depression. This could be attributed to a genetic predisposition or previous challenges in dealing with stress and emotional health. Another factor is distressing birth experiences. Difficult pregnancies, birthing complications, or any other hardship during delivery may heighten the risk of postpartum depression. Such experiences can induce feelings of guilt, inadequacy, or trauma, which can then trigger postpartum depression. Another factor is the lack of social support. Inadequate support from family, friends, and partners during the postpartum period can increase risk for postpartum depression. Emotional and practical assistance is essential during this demanding period for new moms. Another factor is sleep deficiency. The relentless demands of caring for a newborn often result in substantial sleep deficiency, which can impact mental health. Fatigue can then amplify feelings of instability, sadness, and depression. Biological triggers. Having multiple childbirths, such as having twins or triplets, and having a baby younger than when you're 20 years old, can increase the probability of developing postpartum depression. Studies have also found connections between biomarkers for inflammation, heightened stress hormones like cortisol, and thyroiditis. Environmental factors can also increase risk, and these include having a child with special needs, such as a premature birth or medical complications, or a baby that cries excessively or is difficult to soothe. Financial stresses or family strife or the loss of a loved one can also amplify the risk. If OBGYNs screen for these risks in pregnancy, they can then help women identify appropriate help if they need it during pregnancy or shortly after birth. It is usually much easier to connect with a therapist when you're pregnant than during the first weeks of bringing a baby home. Women already have that connection with the therapist and get in to see her quickly, more quickly if need to be. The second important thing I want people to know about postpartum depression 
is that although you might feel alone right now, please know that help is available and postpartum depression is very treatable. You can feel better. Recognizing that you're experiencing symptoms of postpartum depression marks the first step towards seeking help. A new mum is right in the middle of it all, putting her baby's needs before her own and is likely sleep deprived. She might find it hard to find the time or energy to be self-reflective or research where to get help from. If it's her first baby, she may not realize that everyone doesn't feel the same way or she might feel that everyone is coping and there's something wrong with her. It's crucial to normalize how common postpartum depression is and stress that a woman isn't alone if she feels depressed. The first step is getting help to reach out to your healthcare specialist. People who specialize in maternal mental health possess specific expertise and perspectives on the numerous challenges, emotions and encounters commonly faced in the postpartum period. Therefore, step one is consult your healthcare provider your gynecologist, midwife, or primary care physician can play a crucial role. They can assess your symptoms and refer you to a local counselor and offer additional support and resources. Which brings me to getting guidance from a maternal mental health counselor. It's important to see a therapist that specializes in this area to gain deeper insights into your situation and develop a tailored treatment plan. So it's not just treated like, you know, more general depression. This plan may involve therapy, medication, or a combination of both to address your, your needs effectively. Thirdly, connect with a support group. Women facing postpartum depression can access various local and online support groups. These platforms offer a safe and comforting environment to share your journey and gather wisdom from others in the same situation. Last part of this is to reach out and ask for help from your partner or those close to you. Being open about your feelings to your spouse and your most supportive friends and family because their emotional and practical support can be invaluable at this time. My third important thing that I'd want you to know about postpartum depression is this question. Do I have postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety? And what's the difference? I hear this question quite a lot. When a postpartum mum comes to see me, I assess symptoms to see if there is a diagnosis of, diagnosis of postpartum depression or anxiety, which is the most appropriate. And some of the symptoms of postpartum depression, such as worry, agitation, inability to concentrate, appetite and sleep disturbance, which could look like appetite loss and insomnia, which is common in anxiety. These are all very similar to postpartum anxiety. So the relationship between postpartum depression and anxiety can overlap. So how do we know if someone is experiencing postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety? And is it even important to differentiate between the two? As I said, I often see these two conditions overlap. And many women have significant symptoms of anxiety when they're depressed and vice versa. When a baby arrives, every new parent worries that they don't really know what they're doing. And somehow, inadvertently, they may do or not do something that causes harm to their baby. These little humans are so totally vulnerable, and now you're responsible for them. It can be very scary. But these types of worries are totally normal, and everyone gets them occasionally. But with postpartum anxiety, these worries are much more intense and persistent than typical new parent concerns. And they may involve fear or dread and rumination, which means that you keep going over and over the same things in your brain. Studies have shown that women with more severe postpartum depression also have higher levels of anxiety. And women with postpartum generalized anxiety, which is also called GAD, G-A-D, often report that they feel helpless about their symptoms and have depressive symptoms too. What I find is the most important thing is to assess what symptoms are the most prevalent, distressing and meaningful to the new mum who's seeing me. And therefore we start treatment by developing coping strategies that target the symptoms that are most important to her. When deciding what types of psychotherapy to use, it's also important to differentiate between postpartum depression or anxiety. Interpersonal therapy, IPT, appears to be very effective with postpartum depression, but its impact on generalized anxiety symptoms is still unclear. However, there is strong evidence that cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, works well in treating both depression and anxiety symptoms, and I tend to use CBT most often, unless women are telling me that their relationship with their partner is their biggest concern. 
In that case, we will start with interpersonal therapy strategies. So it is important to differentiate between postpartum depression and anxiety, because yes, it will help the target treatment so that we address the symptoms that are most affecting the mum first. Important thing to know, number four, is that I want people to know that there are different levels of severity of postpartum depression. And although moderate and severe postpartum depression definitely need professional treatment, mild postpartum depression symptoms can improve with self-care strategies and by allowing yourself to ask for what you need to feel better. My self-care suggestions involve both practical and emotional strategies, and they're also very helpful to do in addition to any therapy or medication if you have moderate or severe postpartum depression. The most important self-care strategy is to start, I think, is saying to yourself, what will help me feel better? Everyone is different, but in general, become aware of your own needs outside of the baby's needs and allow yourself to get it. This could look like practical help with chores, good nutrition and eat every three hours to keep your blood sugar levels in balance, rest and break some childcare, maybe fresh air and movement and getting out the house, and talking to other women and families who've been through postpartum depression and recovered. Emotional self-care is also important, and I think as a mother, it's really important to not be hard on yourself. Women can have really high ex expectations of themselves. We blame it on perhaps societal beliefs or stereotypes, and what we often see in social media, because new mums tell me that they should know automatically what they're supposed to do, and they feel like they're failing if they don't know. Mums often become the default parent, where they end up being the one who knows best how to feed the baby, how to calm the baby, how to put the baby to sleep, and how to do everything. And then they get it right. And because the other person, the, the other parent, doesn't know how to do these things, this means they often don't get breaks and support that they need to manage. Many women also believe that they shouldn't need to ask for help, and the other new mums are managing just fine. I think this is because they're comparing themselves to other mums' social media posts, which are of course curated to only show the good things and typically don't show the difficult side of parenting. It's only when women share how isolated and out of their depth they feel sometimes that other women open up to them too. We could all do with some support when we have a baby. Our own mothers and families are not always nearby or able to give us support, so we must ask it from partners or friends or babysitter if that's at all possible. When I work with new mums, I often have them write down these messages and when they are criticising themselves, I get them to say these things instead. I can't control everything. I'm doing the best I can at this moment and that's okay. I will try to focus on one thing at a time and stay in the present moment. I will try to be flexible and not focus on how it should be, but rather accept how it is. And lastly, I love my family and I love me too. Love doesn't mean I had to sacrifice myself. My fifth and last important thing to know about postpartum depression, I think is that men can get depressed too after having a baby. We typically use the term paternal depression and mounting studies are now showing that becoming a father increases a man's risk of experiencing anxiety depression, which in turn can also imp impact the child's development and relationships with the mother. Studies have shown that the prevalence of depression in fathers is considerably higher than in the general adult population. Paternal depression can also deteriorate the marital relationships and cause psychosocial and behavioural problems in offspring. So it's important to acknowledge the struggles that are faced by new fathers, as well as supporting mothers who experience postpartum depression. As either parent, if they have depression, this can put a strain on their relationships and may lead to emotional behavioural challenges in their children. Research and focus on paternal depression will hopefully increase awareness of paternal mood disorders and therefore reduce the stigma and bring more community resources to fathers too. My takeaway message is if you're a mum or a dad and you're feeling overwhelmed, please take proactive steps to look up what postpartum depression symptoms are and reach out to a counsellor or therapist who specialises in this area because that can lead to positive changes for the entire family. If you would like to read more articles about postpartum depression, please visit my website at www.drsarahallen.com. Thank you.